For one thing, all the major theistic traditions claim that humanity as a whole has a knowledge of God in some form or another, and that a perfect ignorance of God is impossible for any people, as Paul, for example, affirms in the letter to the Romans. For another, one can insist on absolutely inviolable demarcations between religions at every level only at the price of painfully unrefined accounts of what each tradition teaches. Religions ought never to be treated as though each were a single discrete proposition intended to provide a single exclusive answer to a single exhaustive question. It goes without saying that one generally should not try to dissolve disparate creeds into one another, much less into some vague, syncretistic, doctrinally vacuous spirituality. It should also go without saying, however, that large religious traditions are complex things. Sometimes they express themselves in the dream languages of myth and sacred art. At other times, in the solemn circumlocutions of liturgy and praise. At others, in the serenity of contemplative prayer, or in ethical or sapiential precepts, or in inflexible dogmas, or in exactingly precise and rigorous philosophical systems. In all of these modes, they may be making more or less proximate approaches to some dimension of truth. Inevitably, however, they must employ many symbols that cannot fully explain the truth in itself, but can only point toward it. It may be that one faith is truer than any other, or contains the ultimate truth to which all faiths aspire in their various ways, but that would still hardly reduce all other religions to mere falsehood. More to the point, no one really acquainted with the metaphysical and spiritual claims of the major theistic faiths can fail to notice that on a host of fundamental philosophical issues, and especially on the issue of how divine transcendence should be understood, the areas of accord are quite vast. Certainly, the definition of God I offer below is one that, allowing for a number of largely accidental variations, can be found in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Vedantic and Bhaktic Hinduism, Sikhism, various late antique paganisms, and so forth. It even applies in many respects to various Mahayana formulations of, say, the Buddha consciousness or the Buddha nature, or even to the earliest Buddhist conception of the unconditioned, or to certain aspects of the Tao. Though I do not want to upset Western converts to Buddhism or philosophic Taoism by insisting on the point here. 